just went to Canada Steel and bought some one inch tubing to make motorcycle handlebars and <laughs> it's not something to keep in stock but he just happened to be ordering uh, I think five, four or five pieces, I think four pieces for another guy but uh, he ordered an extra one so we had some in stock so I was able to get the last piece but they're 21 and a half feet long, <laughs> 125 bucks but I, I think I'm going to make it. at least I've got another bike I want to build someday or two <laughs> and I'm gonna, they're going to be custom handlebars too so um, otherwise I'll sell one of these pieces so I just picked them up Canada Steel if you can see them there got my uh, avalanche seat folded down so they fit in and uh, I'm gonna make some custom handlebars so those 1955 Chevy truck gauges fit right in the center of it see how it looks anyway if it doesn't look right I won't do it but I gotta try it to see how it's gonna look Back on the Norton Chopper Bobber Brat Bike. Chopper Bobber Brat Bike. Still waiting for that lifter to bleed down in the FXR. That one lifter, I don't know, I might have to take it out. Something not, only one lifter won't bleed down, so. Uh, but here's where I'm at with this. I finally got the, uh, picked up one of these Speedo drives. Now this is a right hand drive for an early sport, well, early 80s Sportster. So they normally go over here and normally the the drive point is at the bottom. And uh, normally we come at the bottom over here and it's a, it's a right hand drive. So I figured if I bought one of them, a right hand drive one, put it on this side, it would uh, uh, spin in reverse. So this one spins counterclockwise, which is what I need for that speedo drive. And I got it all bolted up tight. The only thing I gotta just do one thing, tape measure. I thought I had this, this wheel lined up pretty straight. So from the center ribbing of the tire, luckily there's a nice center mark on there. It's 65. It's about 65 millimeters that way. And fifty-five this way. So what I gotta do is take five mil, take five mil off of this one. Probably cut it off this end over here. And then add five mil over here. That's what I gotta do. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. What I'll do is I'll probably just take this one out and make this one five mil longer. Don't want all these little separate little pieces in there. And then, so then that front end will be pretty much done there. Um, but when I move this over five mil this way, five mil this way, I'll be able to get rid of the spacer in here. That nut. I think those nuts are about five mil. Yeah, that nut's a little bigger than five mil. So I'll be able to take that nut out and just put a washer in there. And then this will line up nice and straight and be a lot stronger. Yep, that'll do that. Then once I get that, then I can work on that fender right there. Um, gonna use these aluminum spacers. I just have to contour the one side, like a 45 on the one side. And I think these are gonna fit perfect. I got four of them. And they're out of the, these are out of the rear shocks up, up here. So uh, I think that'll all work out there. Okay, that's it for right now. Just took five mil off the end of that uh, spacer. Now I gotta find a spacer that's five mil. Just using a little bit of. I don't know how to grip this thing in. Twelve hundred. <laughs> Twelve hundred grip. Maybe I'll polish it up while I got it on here. I'll flip it around and do the other side. Uh, 
Okay, gotta put this foam down. There's that spacer, all cleaned up. Took five mil off of there. So I think what I'll do is reverse this axle, pull it out, stick it in from the other side to support this bike, and then I'll pull this one out. Well, I gotta get five mil in there is what I gotta do. I don't have to take that out, but I gotta make a five mil one to go in there. Okay, that's what I'm gonna do. Minus one. April 1st. God's a funny guy sometimes. 72, 74 a couple days ago and below freezing today and snow. For the back clevis. The nut on there seems to come up pretty good. The idea is to keep this straight in line for the best strength. I might need one washer in there, we'll see. Okay, that's pretty much uh, all set there for the alignment. Let's see, when it's pulled like that. It's close here. Yeah, I can adjust this out a little more so this won't be an issue there. That's what I'm going to do. Because this it, it pivots down here, so this pivots. don't want this to rub on here. So I'll just extend it out another eighth of an inch. Yeah, that'll work good. Here's the spacer I need to make. I just made that on the lathe. And uh, that handlebar pipe that I bought, <laughs> about 21 feet of handlebar pipe, because <clears throat> that's uh, the only length they had it in, and had to buy it. So, But I ex I'm expecting to make two sets of handlebars out of that. I got a, another project I want to do in the future. I, I know I'm going to custom make those handlebars too. But uh, uh, yeah, so I'm going to put this in here. Should be right, 14 and a half millimeters. I, I screwed up when I machined this one down. I took five mil off this one. I should have took five mil off that one and then added five mil over there and uh, 
I took off the wrong one. So then I had to turn five mil down there. So now I got to fit a 15 mil spacer in there. Crazy. Yep, yep, yep. Let's see how this bolts up. Put the, uh, let's see, where is this one here? Just put the big end that way and the little ends this way. Yeah, that's how the other side is. Okay. All right. That should do her. We'll measure the fender again, and it should be exactly center. Let's snug this up. So there's a line right down the center of this tire I'm going by. And uh, go over here. So it was 55 and 65 before, so 60 should be the center, I think. 60. 58, maybe, I'm not sure. Should be that line right there. Sixty two. I'm getting sixty right on that line this way. bang on that way and 62 this way let me check the bottom ones in case they're bent yeah 62 yeah because this one is bent they're both bent they're both kind of rounded like this, these brackets. Maybe I'll, I'll go right from the center then. <laughs> the center would be the most accurate. I wonder if I can get my... Yeah, like 62. See if I can get my calipers on there. Sixty-one. Sixty-one there. Here. 
61 and 65. So I got a bigger gap here. Sixty-one, sixty-five, There is a spacer on this side already. I didn't put it there, it was already there, but it's a, I think it's a copper washer in there. There's actually two spacers, there's a big one, there's a little one. So if I put in, uh, I, need, I need four thou, so I need to go, or four mil, so I need to go two more mil that way. So I took a little bit too much off of that spacer then is what happened. Two mil is just a washer. But I'm gonna do it. Oh. I just had a, I had a chunk of aluminum. <laughs> I put on the lathe and turned it down to three quarters so I could jam this washer on there. And it jammed on nice and true. And then I uh, turned down, this washer was about this big around. So I just turned it down to a smaller, so we'll stick out um, past the fork there. And then this is 2.5 mil. So I'm gonna try that first. See if that centers it up. I also measured the forks, the width up here, and the width should be the same all the way down. And at the top it's, um, nine and three eighths, and down here it's a sixteenth less than nine and three eighths. So I'm going to leave this spacer in. I might have to take one mil off that, but I'm going to leave it in, and uh, that's not going to affect the positioning of the tire, but it will ex it will affect the width of the fork at the bottom. So I want to see how that's going to affect it. It's easier to take some off and harder to add some on. I just learned that lesson. Took, took too much off at the beginning. Okay, so here's my little steel spacer. So over here. I got to think here now. Is this pushing this over? It should, eh? It's got to push it over. Pushes over, then I might need to put a spacer back in that brake thing again. I think I'm going to have to take some off this. Okay. Let's 
see the width of these forks here. One, two, nine and three eighths exactly. One, two, nine and three eighths. One, two, three. Nine and three eighths. That might be all right. Okay, let's see. That's located in there. We got that on. Got the spacer. Oh, what's going? Oh yeah, that floats on there. That has to float. Let's check this again. Now that is six exactly. And that is six exactly, six mils exactly. Check it with my uh, micrometer, zero that out, millimeters. I'm measuring from the outside, so I got 65. And in here, right on the money, 65. That's dead center. Finally, finally. Okay, now that that's dead center, now I can line up the fender and make the bushings for that. sit like that. It's like a half inch spacer on either side. Let's really check this again in here. Nine and three eighths. Nine and three eighths. It looks like a big space in here, but that's the way she's gonna go. I thought initially that these were tapering down, but this is the same thickness. The thicknesses aren't even the same because this is 19, 19.02. Oh, yeah, about the same. Okay, that's it. That front end is uh, all lined up, ready to go. That's the way she's going to go. Right like that. There's that spacer I just made in there. I wanted it, I didn't want it sticking out past the shoulder here. Like you don't want to be able to see that a great big washer in there. So yeah, it looks like a normal spacer in there now. And uh, yeah, I didn't have to take any off of that side there. It's uh, perfectly parallel. So it looks weird having this big gap in there. <laughs> Crazy, I could put a license plate there or something. Put the headlight right clamp on here. 
<laughs> Put the horn down there. Yeah, mount the horn. <laughs> Those big Kahuga horns right here. Hmm. Or a big funnel. A real cool funnel with a air intake and have a ram air system right down here. Hmm. Okay. Still haven't painted the cylinder yet. I gotta wash it really good, paint it, and I can put the engine back together. Next step is uh, get all the spacers made for for the rear wheel. So it's uh, it's pretty handy that I got that uh, handlebar stock there, one inch outside diameter and uh, three quarter inch inside diameter. Like it's perfect, perfect for making axle spacers. But the first thing with this I've got to do is I've got to fit and do a little bit of machining to put the sprocket and the the uh, rear uh, brake disc on there. I'm hoping there's no spacers in this one. See this has got like a half inch spacer in there, eh? Yeah. Not sure how that works. But this sticks out. This, this housing sticks out farther. If you look down the tire, right here, that housing barely sticks out. That's why they had to stick that spacer in there. Oh yeah, this is probably, I don't have any air in this tire. It's probably the same. So I'm probably gonna need to put a half inch spacer in here. But now that I got the uh, uh, the rear caliper <coughs> bolt here, that'll align this up, and then I can build the spacers and what I need for this here. They do sell spacers for the for this for the uh, the rear disc, but I could make one. Quicker to buy one though. I'm gonna figure that out. That's that's the next thing. Let's figure this all out. Get this as a nice solid rolling chassis. And uh, the tank is gonna be in in a couple days. And then I can figure out where I'm gonna cut this tank. Down here, here somehow. I raise, lower the shocks a little. I'm not sure if I have to. But uh, yeah, I want a lower seat down in here. Gonna have some nice lines. Okay, that's it for now. Gotta rear, drill out the rear caliper bracket, the original Norton one, to fit the Harley uh, axle, three quarter inch. Got lots of room here to drill that out, lots of meat. And if it ever needs to be converted back to a Norton, you just put a bushing in there, so that's no problem. Got a clamp down here. I'm just lining up the drill bit. So it's pushing it that way. That speed. It's 500. It'll start wobbling if I don't have it centered, which I don't. I can see right now. Oh, it's not too bad. Need my light.
I had to put this little spacer under it because this is machined away here for our spacer. So you can see there's lots of meat left on that on that bracket there and now it's got a three quarter inch hole in it for the Harley axle. This uh, sprocket I got is the same pitch as the uh, Norton's. It's a Harley sprocket. And it's got a couple more teeth. I actually wrote them down over here. Now this is a Norton sprocket. And uh, I wrote right on here, 42 teeth. 42 teeth on there. And then the Harley one's got 47. So uh, uh, it won't have as much top end. Yeah, there's a big spot. Yeah, I won't have as much top end speed, but to have a little better torque, low end, and with that, with that kind of bike, you're not going to want to go too fast in anyways. 50, 60 miles an hour. We'll see how she drives. I'll be the test pilot. But I think this hole is a little bit too small, so I got to put this on the lathe and just. I think I got to take off like. Uh, maybe 20 thou and it'll fit on there. 20, 30 thou, I gotta measure it again. But we got the bracket, so I'm gonna put the uh, caliper back on there. I can't even get around in my garage. Right here, I'll mount this back on and see how it all fits. Okay, so I got those new shock bolt stainless steel and uh, this is the one it's a specially machined bolt for the rear shock at the bottom and that's what's going to locate the uh, the rear caliper there it's going to flow it on here so let's put her together and see what happens here Still gonna make proper bushings for in here, but just got a spacer in there right now. Which I don't think is gonna work with that bolt. You just put that like that for now. I got this bracket drilled out. Get this bolt out of here. Definitely, definitely going to need a spacer in there. Let's see how big of a spacer I'm going to need. Tight fit through this where I drilled that hole there, but uh, that's all right. I think that's my issue. My glove. Come on. Yeah, I'm gonna have to hog that hole a little bit bigger. Okay, hogged it out a little bigger. Now, see if I can get that lined up in there. All right. 
так. Get this snugged up a little bit. Throw there. I don't want to over tighten anything. This is. We're just going to stage this whole bike, and then I got to strip it down and uh, paint it, or whatever I'm going to do. So I noticed right away there should be a washer in here. Got this plastic one here in the shim. I know that's the right thickness. There. These freaking Harley bearings just keep popping out. The only thing that holds them in is pressure in those those seals, but the seals aren't doing shit. This way, that's what's going on. There we go. Get this up over there. Okay. Because this is fixed here. I can't change that. That has to stay like that. What I can change is the spacers. And I have to get this wheel centered again. It's gonna be about there. Huh. The center line on this rear wheel is way off. So. Take some measurements. I got it about centered where I want it, approximately. And it works out to about a two inch spacer and a one inch spacer. So I'm gonna go put these on the lathe, machine them down, clean them up a little bit. And start from there. The rear wheel spacing on the early Nortons with the rear fender was uh, was an issue. And if you um, you're limited, I remember there was an issue with getting it centered in the fender and the backbone. And uh, if you changed one thing, you couldn't change the other. Like the fender, you can't move the fender. I remember there was an issue doing that, and I on the forums guys were seeing that as well too so okay i'm gonna mark first square up the ends here and then uh get it down to one inch this one <laughs> everything's nothing's set up 100 percent here yet i just got things working I'm just getting things working so it works. I'm still waiting for the battery on that FXR to charge up, but the battery was dead on that thing. It's not dead. Not enough juice. No, this isn't going to work. Thank you. 
I've got play in this uh, uh, cross feed here. No play going that way, but I got play coming back. There's I got to take it all apart and find out what's going on. Okay, I got that squared up. Now let me just turn it down to about one inch. Mark this. I'm getting my micrometer here. Geez, not much further. Gonna take off a few thousand more and try that. Get around in the uh, the edges because it's got to fit into a seal. than an inch to me. 1.06 of an inch. I'm going to start there. I can always turn it down. Do the same with this one. Okay, got a couple spacers made. We're going to start there. There's a two inch one. Actually, I never did measure that at the end. <laughs> got to be close enough, but let me just see here. Uh, two decimal zero three. That's pretty close. And then I got a one inch one. So it's got to fit inside the uh, the uh, seals there as well too. So I'm not. I might have to machine the outside down if it's not the right size. But I'm pretty sure it's one inch. in there. Get one side at a time. Oh, the fucking thing fell sideways in there. There's a spacer in there. It has to be in there. That spacer. There we go. Right there.
some space in here. I think the spacer's got to be bigger. Let's go right here. The wheel is moving. Do it from the other side. Okay. I need about an eighth inch more on this spacer. start there. So the difference between those two lines right there, a couple mil, three mil, eighth of an inch. So much longer I need to make this one. Two. A little more than two mil. Oh, that's, um, that's 0.2 of an inch. <laughs> Okay, yeah, I need to, uh, <laughs> let's change that to mill, it's easier to read. Zero it. Five. A little more than five mil longer. So I'm gonna make another one. Okay, let's try this spacer. That fits pretty good so far. Got the little spacer in there. Okay, now I can figure out how I gotta cut this axle off and thread it. I've never used a threader on that today. That's gonna be a trick. I'll have to experiment with it first. <laughs> and uh, screw around with it, but there we go. That's pretty close like that. I should put a sleeve on here so I can clamp this right tight. See 
here. I got this here, this here. Where's my tape measure? Now, I got um, to that part there is almost two inches less than sixteenth. That's to the inner part of this, and that is two inches. And this is two inches, um, not quite two inches. That's a little, I could go one sixteenth. Well, half a sixteenth, 500 thou. This wheel could be moved over to the right. So that's not much. Could go to the right, so that's nothing. That's getting it just centered in the swing arm. So that's pretty good within 500 thou. So a half inch spacer is not going to be enough. They sell different thickness of spacers for these things. I need to stick something in there. Another issue. The diameter of the Harley uh, disc is 11 and a half. I thought it was 11, I thought I bought, but I just measured it's 11 and a half, and I'm pretty sure the Nort one's 11 inch. So I could machine this down, but then it'll open up this hole here a little bit. <laughs> It'd be like a sawtooth on there, but, and then it'll probably, the pads will probably cover this little hole here. They'll probably wear that down. Um, then I, I could bevel these out. Because I, I think the Norton's a totally different bolt pattern. I don't think they sell a smaller disc. I think all the discs are the same size, just a couple different inner sizes. Uh, one issue after another. That'll be hard to turn down on a lathe too, stainless steel, it's hard to turn that down. But I think I gotta take a half inch off it. Close to it. And I need a three quarter inch spacer. I think that's as far as I can go for today. Um, I'm gonna have to cut this off and then uh, machine some threads onto it. I gotta figure that on my, on my lathe. It's gonna be a little tricky, especially with this nut on this end. It might slide right through my whole chuck. I'm hoping it can, I'm hoping it will. Okay, that's it for today. That's as far as I can go.